Hey guys, welcome back to Awana. Uh, tonight we're going to be going over the section 1.2, God is Holy. So let's start by reciting the memory verse. Revelation 4, 8b. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Alright, good job. So let's talk about this lesson now. God is holy. So in your um, start here portion, of the God is holy section of your handbook, you were asked to like, draw or write about a time that you had trouble making a right or good choice. So if you did that, go ahead and talk about it with your parents or siblings or show them and let them know what you, what you chose and wrote down and talked about. So, what makes a good choice or right choice or a wrong choice or bad choice? What does what helps us make those decisions? Do you have an idea on that? Well, the the good choices that we make, the right choices, those come from God and the Holy Spirit and they help us make those choices, right? But what about the bad or wrong choices that we make? Where do those come from? You have any ideas on that? Yeah, they come from the sin, right? The sin in our lives helps us to make the bad choices and the wrong choices, things we shouldn't do. Here's another question for you. Does God ever have trouble making the right or wrong choices? What do you think? No, he doesn't. He always makes the right choice. He doesn't make wrong choices. Everything God does is perfect and holy and just and right. And he doesn't do things that are wrong and sinful. So we all make wrong choices sometimes, right? I mean, all of us do. Your parents do. Your brothers and sisters do. Your aunts and uncles, cousins, your teachers, your wanna teachers, your pastors. Everybody makes wrong choices sometimes. Doesn't mean we want to or we like it, but we do make wrong choices sometimes. So, no one is perfect or holy because we are all sinners, right? Well, sort of, except for Jesus. He was perfect. He never sinned. And obviously God is perfect and never sinned either. So, the rest of us are all sinners, but not God. God has never, never has trouble making right choices. He is holy, which means he is perfect and without sin and always does what is right. That's what God is. Let me turn the page here. So we just said God is holy, right? Our amazing God is perfect and without sin. He has never done anything wrong, and he will never do anything wrong either. That's pretty neat to think about as well. Let's read our memory verse one more time. Revelation 4, 8b. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. So it's pretty holy, right? Just being one holy means he's never sinned, but he's holy, holy, holy. He's as holy as anybody can be, right? <laughs> he's the best. So we are not holy like God, though. We are humans who are sinful and born into sin. We, we didn't have a choice in the matter, really. That's just how we are. And... Because we are all related to the first man, Adam, who was a sinner, and because of our sin, we do not seek after God on our own. So Romans 3.10 says, As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. See, if we were righteous, then we would seek God all by ourselves, all the time. But we don't do that, do we? No we did we wouldn't have to be learning and talking about it right now would we because we'd already be doing it but we're not so the bible teaches us how to be right with god if we want to know what is right we have to study the bible that makes sense right god gives us his word to teach correct and train us that's it what the bible is for in second timothy three sixteen, it says all scripture is god breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So 
the words in the Bible that God gave us are used for a lot of things. They're all very important. We can be holy in God's sight, though. We can't be holy, but we can be holy in God's sight. Once we trust Christ as Savior, God forgives our sins. We become holy in his sight. The Holy Spirit then lives inside of us and helps us to do what's right and to be more like Christ. The Holy Spirit also helps us to not want to make those bad choices anymore either. In Romans 8, 9 through 11 says, You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. So, just by trusting in Jesus and what he did for us and everything that he did in his life makes us holy in God's eyes and gives us that eternal life with God someday. So that's the important thing to remember here. So let's go over a couple things real quick here. What does it mean that God is holy? Remember? It means he's perfect and sinless, right? Never does anything wrong, always makes the right choices. How can we be holy if we are sinners? Hmm. Remember that one? Because we're sinners, so we're not holy. But how can we be holy for sinners? We have to trust in Jesus, right? And then that gives us so that we're holy in God's eyes. We're not holy, but he thinks we look holy now because we trust in Jesus. So how does God see us after we accept Christ as our Savior? I just said he sees us as holy beings again. So who comes to help us from sinning? After we accept Jesus, what did we say? That something comes down from heaven and enters our bodies. Yes, the Holy Spirit does, right? <clears throat> so, God is holy, perfect, without sin, and always right. We are sinful and born in sin. But once we trust Christ as Savior, we become holy in God's sight. The Holy Spirit lives inside us after that and helps us to do what's right and to be more like Christ. So that's the lesson for tonight. It was kind of quick, but it's an important one again. And so um, let me go ahead and close in prayer, and then we'll be done. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another lesson, another time together with the clubbers, and uh, we just pray that you will continue to guide them and be with them. We pray that your Holy Spirit will guide them and help them to make the right choices that they need to make each day. We pray that you will help them to read their Bibles and learn more of what you have planned for them. We just pray that you will keep them safe throughout the week and until we meet again next week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Until next week. We'll see you later. Bye.